Hello, my name is Denis Batranko, I'm the head of the Network Security Department Positive Technologies, and we continue today with a topic like technological independence. Will the Russian business survive in the cyber storm? Dmitry Gadar, and I will address my first question to Dmitry. Hello, Dmitry. Hi. Technological independence. How do you think it's necessary to your company? Or maybe you can speak more globally. I think this is a wide concept. Technological dependence or independence. We've seen that some updates have been included uh, and they had some inbuilds, and this uh, dependence doesn't look like the best way of dependent development. We use a lot of open source, and uh, we could have these uh, lay-ins, but we have forked those pieces which have been published previously. That's why it doesn't look like it can really damage us. Independence is always good. But what, what's going to be the quality of it? And this is a question, it's a quick key question. Generally, there is nothing bad from independence. It's a positively and a right thing to do, especially uh, in informational security. This is a proper direction. The question is about the quality and independence and quality of those decisions that will be realized. The question is about supporting the market, technological independence, understanding of where we are moving into, creating the community that will drive the development of products of information security on the Russian market. I don't remember that those bookmarks were in some commercial network, only in the open source. Not IDC and something else was... Uh, I did see something in the commercial software, something related with the VMware, but I'm not going to lie. Firstly, what I've seen, these were dependency bookmarks, and this was some agitation, propaganda, or some basic things, like when the dependency was trying to find out where is it located. For example, if it's in a segment, it was replacing by hard uh, pieces of code. And I also see that very often we'll be able to see vulnerabilities in some public libraries, for example, like with OpenSSL, when everybody has been changing their software because it, everybody is using OpenSSL and this supply chain attacks they are the main problem in the modern world, but not only in our country. And that's why we are looking at technological independence, dear uh, listeners. And because you represent the financial sphere, I have the interesting question. According to our statistics, the financial department is protected much better than other companies. Therefore, I have a question to you. Is it truth to your point of view and what is to be done for other spheres in order to protect them even more? Well, most likely it is truth and uh, it is difficult for me to say for other spheres, but in this particular sphere I work most of my life. Most likely, yes, but both like criminals. Uh, the organizations, first of all, are motivated uh, financially and for them this is a key data loss, the uh, client uh, trust, uh, uh, losing capitalization of the company. These are the things that they can lose. And first of all, for the financial organization, first of all, this is very important topic. And second of all, strong regulation in the market of loan credit organizations in Russian Federation drives the development of the security area. So this is a key point. And what you've been speaking but supply chain, it's very important for the financial organizations, because considering the fact that financial organization, if it's secured better, and it, if it's secured better than other companies, then service suppliers are not so well protected. So this storm of attacks doesn't look as so highly qualified attacks. This is usually phishing attacks, Defense means uh, when the same means of defense uh, detect the standard attacks 
and the companies which don't have this uh, defense, they can be penetrated through into more protected areas, like financial organizations. And if these ads, if these integrations are not well protected, can you tell me, please, then it happens that if you have this problem that your partners, technological partners or any other partners, they should be protected the same way as you have been. And do you have any requirements to your partners? Yes, we do have those requirements. And it's not necessary. They have to be protected on the same level as we are because we should have a normal risk balance and what the company is able to do. So in which direction this integration was done? Analysis of these integrations. Uh, if the company is sending us some leads once a month, then this uh, integration would be very easy to be kept under the control and analyze the packages which are coming from this organization. So that this organization would not be attacked. Well, the fact that this organization is being attacked, it may not be critical. You have to look at the second aspect. Historically, it's not an aspect of informational security. However, they can attack a company which is a critical supplier. Maybe they supply some products or services which can violate a functioning of the company in case of uh, if the supplier is being encoded so it destroys not informational security but availability and you should look at this so the security can be a driver from the point of view of asking business to look at those suppliers can you back up this channel? So you look at the availability of your services depending from the availability of the service of suppliers, including, including, and these dependencies can be available and they do exist. And the attack against uh, colonial pipeline uh, encoding it has shown us that many companies have suffered from it, from this encryption. Yeah. And this is obvious that things like that can happen. So from this First, it's the infrastructural protection, protection from the point of view of information security, protection of the company from these parties, analysis of communications, supporting them in updated situation. But you have to look closely on the availability and you should see at what happens. So it happens that your team is involved in security of the bank itself. It's an infrastructure. It's involved in the security or the control of the security of the suppliers or partners. And honestly speaking, you're also responsible for the security of your clients, because if they have infected their mobile phone and internet bank, then you have to follow this up and see this. And this objective becomes very gigantic and big one, because you see the growing number of suppliers and clients all the time. And then I have another question. How do you follow up and how many people do you need for this? Because business is growing and uh, basic question, how do you calculate the norm? How many people should you have no, from the headcount point of view? Well, I did ask myself this question many times and it seems that calculating the number of security people, it's very calculated. I've seen some calculations which show how the security are calculated from the IT, from the budget, security headcount, I mean. And to my point of view, it's not a proper cal calculation because you should calculate from the number of business dynamics and threats within this business and the from the number of processes and necessary maturity of these processes. For example, if you want to bring the maturity of the processes to a certain level, you will need more headcount for the operation processes. The same operational processes, they can be automated and they can be transferred to IT department. They can be transferred to the outsource. So I don't really understand the main objective of this goal. Why? Why should you think about it? There is a certain balance of risk and uh, 
Expenses for security provisioning and it can be achieved differently. So you can build, give some of the services to the outsource company with a certain level of risk. You can have big internal development and pay money for this, but you don't pay this money in a long term period of time for purchase and integration of external solutions. So I haven't found a necessity to precisely calculate it, even though I did have this conversation and I do ask this question to myself, I'm looking at all processes. Informational security team is growing. It's growing constantly, but at the same time, we review all processes. Sometimes we deny some services which seem to be less necessary. Right now, we're going to be joined by Artem Sichov, a security advisor, advisor of our CEO, Denis Baranov. Hello, Artem. Today, we are discussing technological independence of the industry and technological independence of the country. And I think you and Dmitry, representatives of financial industry, so we discuss financial industry technological independence. Can you tell us what your opinion? Do we need technological independence? And how should we try to achieve it? And whether it's possible? Well, I would say that in the financial industry, technological independence partially exists, and it always was there, because most of financial organizations in their core systems, they've been using domestic developments, local software, and most of them, everything that's been built around, it was done by local companies. Speaking about security means, but 80% of what is being used in financial organizations, these are also domestic developments. But the problem is a little bit deeper, much deeper. So if you go down to a lower level than simple application level, like middleware, databases, operating systems, and if you will even speak about hardware, this situation is like in all other industries. I don't think it as a biggest risk for the financial organization in the nearest future, relatively speaking, two, three years from now. We do have some reserve of security, but it's a challenge from the point of view of price increase for financial services, because everything starting from the hardware and all the way to the middleware, it requires certain negotiation, certain efforts, uh, continuous development, substitution of uh, decommissioned software hardware and from this point of view we will face a situation of the price markup the main way out for most of medium small financial organizations will be used of uh, outsourcing services usability movement to the cloud solutions and joint use of certain services However, this is will this will happen in the nearest future. What I think, what I think we should do right now, we should get involved in software and hardware which influences the activities of those financial organizations without such massive uh, substitution in Russian Federation. HSMs, domestic HSMs, which, which should be uh, in year 2025 and will. And right now, this is the time to think about it, because basically speaking, the industry is being provided services by two foreign companies. And uh, at which moment of time they will stop support at which moment of time they will start working with retail payments it's a big 
question mark. That's why at this particular area I would concentrate most of my efforts. Dima, it means that you also have foreign suppliers. We have different ones. Well, if they will connect to the general network, Safe nets, uh, Alice, uh, safe net. Everybody uses the same algorithms. And there is a small addition. I was thinking that if we are speaking about technological independence from the point of view of operational systems and hardware, software, if we are moving to Russian software, we should start thinking about the global experience when the biggest number of researchers are researching the same operating system and their vulnerabilities. And if you will get away from the realities, you want to receive certain operating system which is not sufficiently analyzed by researchers and you should include some serious gaps of this vulnerability into your scope of investigation so you should develop the community which is going to be a russian big bounty a russian size big bounty that is going to attack and we'll try to reverse all of this together well during this conference that's what we're doing today well, speaking about such substitution, I wouldn't speak about it uh, about one separate country, even though Russian Federation is a big country. We should speak about international integration, but in totally different aspect, because at least speaking about uh, countries of BRICS uh, and uh, Asian countries, this integration should be developed and the global bug bounty and the Shanghai Cooperation Organization countries. Uh, and speaking about these attacks, uh, the vector should be moved from Anglo-Saxon countries uh, to friendly states, like SEO states. Well, technological independence should not be a synonym of isolation. You know, technological independence sounds very good, and the word independence is a very good word by itself. But this independence should not become a reverse side of uh, becoming less safe. So we better should head it. And, you know, they should say that we depend from Russia. No, I would speak about integration in a wider sense of this word, because we do have a lot of things to borrow from our Indian colleagues, uh, from Chinese colleagues, and they have a lot of things to borrow from us. No. Another thing, you know what is important, what is important, don't have the means of production in our country. Roughly speaking, we don't have production lines uh, where we would print the motherboards or components. They are not available for microelectronic sector, and this is a problem. So we should concentrate our attention in this direction, but this is back to question of close integration between state, states of BRICS. You know, when you've been speaking about levels, nobody uses foreign compilers like C, C++, all the programming languages that we use, even the compilers are foreign made and nobody even thinks about it that they can also have some standard library can easily be substituted and you can use it differently yes you reminded me a wonderful story which did happen uh, in an spk company and one respected foreign company was offering their own security software we say okay no problems let's go to a certification process and everything's going to be all right and those who know certification you know that the source code is provided and the lab should collect the acting sample from this source code and at this stage the lab was constantly facing errors constantly well the source codes are okay, they're checked, and the compiler tries to assemble something and it doesn't work. So we went to this uh, company and they say, yes, truthfully, for this, we have our own compiler for this. They say, can you provide it to us? No, we cannot. And that's it. So can you guess what was added to this, com to this compiler when they've been doing the assembly? Because compiler is not just transfer of your companies from high-level language to low-level language. It's a lot of libraries. Yes, yes. It's work with the OS. It's work with libraries, graphic libraries, and other libraries. 
So there's a lot of questions. Yes, this is attack of the future. This is even attack uh, of the last year. I think one of the companies last year, like Sonar Cube, was speaking about 600% growth of injections of dependencies for this year. Because we've been speaking about it for quite a while, and we should pay much more attention to it, not only right now, but it's been pushed by the current situation uh, in Russian Federation. This is a global trend, and this is a growing trend, because it's too simple to attack dependency and get a profit from thousands of companies to attack one library to the login and password of this company in GitHub, and you get access to a big number of companies which use this library. Okay, right now it's the time to draw the line. Dima said that they've done the fork of the public library that you use, and this is the reply to the situation. It's not even a reply, but we don't have enough functionality and we have to fork and complete and then those updates which they publish, they will not be able, we will not be able to attach it to this uh, functionality that we've created. It's a like Frankenstein for this. Well, the amended part is bigger than the main part. Okay, thank you very much, Dima, and I like your comment. What should be our focus? I think we do have this direction of our focus. We are listened by those guys who are making those devices we're speaking about. Yeah, those devices are available, but most importantly, financial organizations should actively work with them. I know that we are opening the topic of inject firewalls, and everybody speak about productivity and performance. It's not important. Whatever they speak about, devices, libraries, but it should work fast and we look at the hardware problem. So briefly, within these 30 minutes, we, will, we were able to disclose this topic. Thank you very much for your participation, and I would like to invite you for the next meetings. Thank you. It was very interesting. Thank you.